DJI has finally entered the action camera market with the Osmo Action. We haven't really seen that much innovation when it comes to action cameras in the past couple of years. The improvements were basically limited to higher frame rates and electronic stabilization. Osmo Action finally changes that with some new features. It is not really possible to make Osmo Action review without comparing it to GoPro Hero 7 Black because it is a benchmark, but I will try to keep that for a separate video. Some of those innovations have been made in the physical design, so let's take a look at that first. Size of the Osmo Action is similar to other action cameras, but it is a bit wider. The build quality is very good. It is made of high quality plastics with nice grippy texture. The lens cover can be easily unscrewed, which is the simplest and in my opinion the best option. The bottom side of the battery is actually a part of the structure, which saves the space, so that is a clever solution. The most striking difference in comparison with other action cameras is definitely the second screen on the front side of the device, but I will talk about that later. Osmo Action is water resistant up to 11 meters without the housing. Overall, I like the build quality a lot, it feels very solid, so no complaints here. Osmo Action uses 12 megapixel 1 over 2.3 inch sensor that we already know from the Osmo Pocket. Field of view is 145 degrees, so it is an ultra wide angle lens with f2.8 aperture. If you use Rocksteady electronic image stabilization, it gets cropped by 18 to 22 percent. That is usually considered to be a disadvantage, but for me personally, it might be an advantage because I prefer a bit narrower and more natural looking field of view. If you just want the widest possible angle and electronic stabilization, it will be a disadvantage. Here I will also mention one of my most favorite features of the Osmo Action, which is the deep warp. That fixes the fisheye look and the distortion in camera. That means that the footage no longer has that cheap look associated with action cameras. For me personally, that is actually a game changer because I usually use action camera as a small point and shoot camera, so being able to get a footage that looks like a footage from normal camera is great. It further crops the image though, so keep that in mind, but overall, huge thumbs up for the D-War feature. Regarding the image quality, 4K video looks generally good, but there is one problem and that is the over sharpening and noise artifacts associated with that. I have also complained about that on Osmo Pocket, but there it was fixed by the addition of this Cinelai color setting, which is not over sharpened. Osmo Action already has this Cinelai color setting, but unlike on the Osmo Pocket, it doesn't fix the over sharpening. How bad it is depends on the scene, in good light it is not great, but not terrible. In the low light or high dynamic range scenes, the over sharpening makes noise very unpleasant. At the moment, Osmo Action can't match the Osmo Pocket in terms of the image quality, despite that both use the same sensor. I'm pretty sure that DJI will fix this by firmware update. HDR video is also one of the standout features of the Osmo Action, and I have to say that it is great. It really captures a lot of dynamic range and the colors are very nice in this mode. The problem is that it doesn't work with Rocksteady stabilization. If you can use it though, it will probably provide the best image quality from the Osmo Action. Quality of the stills is actually outstanding. The amount of detail is very good and it captures a lot of dynamic range. RAWs capture a lot of information, so I am very happy with the stills. It is also possible to do exposure bracketing with Osmo Action, so the camera will take 5 stills with different exposures, and then you can merge those into one picture in editing software such as Aurora HDR to get one image with big amount of information. The distortion is also fixed in camera if you turn the warp feature on. I have to say that the Osmo Action is already the best action camera for shooting stills. Stabilization has always been a strength of DJI in wide variety of devices, but I think that this is their first attempt at electronic image stabilization. And it is very efficient. It completely neutralizes shaking if you are trying to hold the camera still. It also works very well for panning or just handheld shooting with the Osmo Action. It also smooths out working pretty well. As I've said, that comes at the price of a significant crop. It just needs space to move the frame, so it is what it is. 
For me, it is actually an advantage most of the time, as I've said, but for POV shooting, it is probably not ideal. It would also be great if there was a possibility to choose option with less crop and less efficient stabilization, so I would like to see that in firmware update as well. Here I also have to mention that there is a lag on the screen if you have the rock steady turned on, but I haven't found that to be an issue for me personally. Overall, I am very happy with the stabilization. As I have said many times, stabilization makes a huge difference in overall look of the footage, so I am happy that it is a priority for manufacturers, and DJI did not disappoint in this regard. Regarding the handling and controls, that is great as well. There are just three buttons on the Osmo Action. Shutter button and power button are both on the top of the camera, which is what I prefer. A long press of the power button turns the camera on and off. What I like a lot is that the short press works as a sleep mode, which makes the whole operation much faster, so thumbs up for that. Quick switch button is located on the left side and it can be used for switching modes. You can also customize which items do you want to see there. Osmo Action has great 2.25 inch back screen with 325 pixels per inch. That is actually one of the most impressive things about the Osmo Action. The increase of the size in comparison with GoPro definitely makes a difference. It is very sharp, the brightness is efficient and the colors are accurate. Touch functionality is flawless. That is especially important because that is also how you change the settings. Osmo Action also has a front screen, which is one of the main standout features of this device. It is 1.4 inch screen, which is enough for vlogging and checking the settings. It is also sharp and bright enough. You can change whether you want to see the whole frame or just zoomed in square. Dual screen setup is a great idea in my opinion. I think that it is definitely very useful for vlogging and it reflects the needs of customers. The user interface on the Osmo Action is just as good. You can swipe from the top edge to access the general settings and from the bottom edge to change the resolution and frame rates. Video or photo settings are also well organized and all of the main features are easily accessible. It is by far the best user interface that I've seen on an action camera. Larger screen also makes the navigation easier, so overall thumbs up for the handling. Another thing that I like about the Osmo Action is the lens cover. It can be screwed on and off, which is the simplest and in my opinion the best solution. I already have a ton of filters for the Osmo Action from Freewell and from Skyread, including all kinds of specialized filters such as long exposure ND1000 filters, light pollution filters and gradient filters, links to those will be in the description and I will also make a video about those. On the left side we have a door that can be removed just like on the GoPro. Here you can find USB-C and micro SD card slot. This is in my opinion better place for SD card in comparison with battery compartment. There is no HDMI output though and it seems like the USB-C cannot output the video signal, so it is not possible to use the Osmo Action with external monitor, which is a bit unfortunate. One more thing that I miss on the Osmo Action is the quarter inch mount on the bottom side, but considering the amount of technology in this tiny camera, I can't blame DJI for not putting it there. That brings us to the housing. DJI has made it capable with GoPro mount, which is definitely a wise decision. That means that I can use it with GoPro shorty handle, all of crazy mounts that I have, and it is possible to mount it basically anywhere. Cage is made of very high quality plastics. It is very easy to open and close, and the buttons have good feedback as well. Top LED is also clearly visible when you use the cage, which is a nice touch. One thing that I don't like about this housing is that you can't access the USB slash SD card without removing the door. Fortunately, I already have better options incoming from PGY Tech and Ulanzi, both of which will provide access to the SD card compartment and cold shoe mounts. Unfortunately, I can't tell you anything about the sound because this unit makes some rattling noises, so I will have to send it in for a repair. Osmo Action uses 1300mAh battery. As I have said, the bottom part of the battery is also a part of the outer shell of the camera, so there is a gasket to keep the Osmo Action water resistant. 
The battery life is similar to GoPro, it should last about 60 to 75 minutes of 4K recording, which is okay for this type of a device. One more thing that I like a lot about the Osmo Action is the app. It uses the same DJI MIMO app as the Osmo Pocket and it works just as well. The connection is very fast and very reliable, it lets you change all of the settings, the lag is acceptable as well. Firmware updates also work flawlessly, so thumbs up for wireless functionality. To sum up, my first impressions of the Osmo Action are generally very positive. It is definitely the most innovative action camera that came out in a long time. I like the build quality and some of the physical aspects, such as filter thread, SD card compartment on the side, and excellent back screen. The front screen is also a very useful addition for vlogging. Rocksteady electronic image stabilization is the most efficient that I have seen, but it comes at the price of a larger crop. The D-Warp feature is a huge thing for me personally, because it fixes somewhat cheap action camera look. User interface and smartphone app are also the best on the market in my opinion. Regarding the things that I don't like that much, at the moment that is mainly the oversharpening. DJI was able to fix that in the Osmo Pocket, so I'm pretty sure that they will fix that here as well. One other thing that I don't like is that you can't use it with external mic at the moment, but that may change as well. Overall, I think that it is a great action camera, but also a great point and shoot camera with wide angle lens and very useful B camera for professional productions. I can't say that it is so called GoPro killer yet, but once the oversharpening and maybe the rock steady lag are fixed and there will be a way to connect the external microphone, it might as well be GoPro killer, but that is a story for another video. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.